Wholesaling real estate is one of the cornerstone ways of finding the greatest deals out there possible. And every investor should learn this, but is it something you want to consider doing long-term? What's the pitfalls of that? In this episode, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of wholesaling real estate. Hey, welcome back. I'm going to be talking about the negatives and the positives of wholesaling real estate and one of the many regrets you'll have by not starting and then some of the very many, many regrets that you'll have by doing it too long. All right, one of the pros, it's the fastest way to make money in real estate. It takes no credit, no money, and it's the fastest way to get started. Let me give you a story of example of when I first got started in, in wholesaling real estate. I actually went around and knocked on doors where people went, were in Liz pendants. They were behind on their mortgages. They were on notice of default list that I found on PropStream. You too can have PropStream, and I'm gonna give you a link to a seven-day free trial, and that is thelandsharkslist.com. This will give you a seven-day free trial to find houses that are behind on their mortgage, that they're in notice of default or Liz pendants or pre-foreclosure, depending on what part of the country you're in. But this is a fast way to make income quickly in real estate. So what I did, I would go and knock on all these doors, and if they didn't answer, I would leave a note for them to call me. And lo and behold, someone did finally call. And I got this house under contract at $150,000. This was the exact amount that the seller owed on that mortgage. And the house was worth almost one ninety five. dollars It was in great condition. It was actually just kind of dirty. He hadn't cleaned it in multiple years, but he had given up on paying the mortgage for whatever reason. Well, I put this thing on Craigslist that very night for one dollars $155,000. I was planning to make a $5,000 assignment fee. Well, by the next day, I had a buyer lined up. This guy loved four bedroom, three bath houses in this area, and he was set to close in seven days. I was able to get the seller, you know, save his credit, get him out of the house and make a quick $5,000 assignment fee all in a period of about seven days from the time that he called on my note. That was quick money, so that's a pro. But let me tell you a con about it. I should have purchased this house for $150,000 because now it's worth about $255,000. It's like went over $105,000 in appreciation in a very, very short amount of time. And I could have rented it out and had someone else cover the mortgage. So that's how you build wealth. So the pro was quick money. The con was I didn't build any wealth. I made a quick $5,000 to get in and out. So another pro in wholesaling real estate is becoming a deal finder not a deal creator. This is one of the best assets you'll have and you can take with you for your entire real estate career. This is the ultimate hack of being able to find deals. Talking to 100 sellers, 99 out of 100 are not gonna wanna sell their property at a discount. But there's that one seller that's motivated enough that's gonna need your speed that you provide and the convenience that you provide to ultimately bring this deal to someone else. This is called wholesaling. Now, if you build the skill, you don't always have to wholesale your deals. That's where I'm getting to the con side of this. You don't actually get to create wealth. You're gonna look back five years from now and see all the deals that you've wholesaled to other cash buyers that are holding on to these things and building wealth. When this real estate markets like we're in right now are doubling in value, you're gonna be really sad to look back and realize that you never kept any of your properties. So that's a major con of becoming a wholesaler. You know, you get so into the deal flow, the deal volume, and you sell everything, you wholesale everything you get, you get deals that are that have got 50,000, 60,000, 100,000 in equity, where if you just held on to it for 30 years and let someone else pay the mortgage and that tenant pays the mortgage and ultimately pays that property off, that's true wealth. Now imagine if you multiply that by 10, 20, 30 properties, you now have the ability to change your, your financial freedom, you retire you know, with massive amount of money, and then you build generational wealth for your family. All right, another pro is a huge cash buyers list. When you're a successful wholesaler in real estate, he who has the biggest cash buyers list wins. When you have a cash buyers list of 100 people, 200 people, 10,000 people, if each one of those people have $100,000 that they can spend, whether it be a line of credit, you know, lenders that will lend them that money, you have a lot of power and authority behind you. You have enough cash to buy a small town. You know, use this to your advantage. Go out and make so many offers because you're never gonna spend all of your cash buyer's money. They've got so much financial backing behind them. Some of these, I have a cash buyer that has the ability to write a $20 million check 
in 24 hours. And that's just one of my 11,000 cash buyers. So this gives you so much confidence when you're going out there and making offers on, on real estate, you know, multifamily buildings, large parcels of land, just knowing that you've got the financial backing behind you of cash buyers that's willing to write a check overnight that gives you so much confidence and authority to go out and make multiple, multiple offers a day. I get a lot of brand new real estate investors asking me, hey Brent, what if all my offers get accepted? And I say, that's great. That's actually a great problem to have because you're never gonna outspend your cash buyer's money. All right, let's talk about a con. A major con with wholesaling real estate properties is it's treated like ordinary income. It's not even capital gains. You wish you could get treated like capital gains because it would be a whole lot less. You have nothing to depreciate, nothing to write off when you don't actually keep the property in order to rent it out to someone else. So if you keep the property, you can actually depreciate the building for 27 years. You can massively write off the actual depreciation. It's called accelerated depreciation when you fix up the property and paint it and put carpet in it and a refrigerator. So there's nothing to write off except for your marketing expenses, maybe your vehicle, maybe your phone lines, things like that. But you can't you cannot depreciate the property. And this is a huge tax liability at the end of the year. You can often pay up to upwards of 40% on taxes, depending on what income bracket you're in. All right, let's talk about a pro. You have very little cash into these deals. A lot of times the cash I have into the deals that I wholesale will be my marketing expenses and paying my team. And ultimately the team doesn't get paid until we sell something. So I really don't even have my team expenses into the deal. It's really just the cost of marketing for that deal, the cost to acquire that contract. You know, sometimes my cost to acquire a contract is upwards of $5,500 on a house deal and anywhere from as low as $200 on a land deal. So that what does that tell you? If it's $200 on a land deal and $5,500 on a house deal, land is way easier, way more affordable to get under contract than a house is. And depending on what market you're in and how competitive it is and how fast it's growing. So sometimes I'll have about $5,500 into acquiring a contract for a single family home, but we can get it under contract at such a great price. We'll sometimes make a 10, 20 or $30,000 assignment fee. So let me ask you this question. Would you spend 5,500 to make $10,000 if it was guaranteed and you had an asset under control and you can sell this asset to a cash buyer? Yes, the answer is yes. You do it multiple times a day and twice on Sunday if possible. So that is a major pro of wholesaling houses. Pretty cool, right? So if you're getting lots of great information out of this, hit that subscribe button and like it as well. So go ahead and like this video and subscribe and let's keep going. All right, so I'm gonna beat up this regret one more time. I urge you as a wholesaler of real estate, make sure you're keeping at least one out of 10 of your deals that you're doing and let the other wholesaling pay for that one deal you keep. Because if you just kept one deal a month, 12 months from now, you would have 12 properties. Don't be the guy that looks back five years from now and realizes he didn't keep anything, any of the gold for himself. All right, so check out my next video, how to wholesale real estate step-by-step.